The journey is long and it's now time to settle in a new land and build your city. Do you want to learn how to play my city? In this video, we're going to take you through the rules for this game. And if you stay tuned till the end, you can pick up some tips along the way. Coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Ripple University. Now let's learn how to play My City, a game by Rainer Knizia and published by Thames and Cosmos. My City is a competitive tile laying game for one to four players. At the beginning of each game, players have an identical set of tiles and then, based on the cards that are drawn, will slowly build their city out from the river printed on their board. Once all players have finished placing tiles, the game ends. And then players will either score or lose points based on a series of criteria for the game you're playing, such as leaving trees uncovered or trying to cover as much of the board as possible. My City is a legacy game, played over a total of 24 episodes. Each episode adds new rules or new ways to score, and players will permanently alter their boards by adding stickers to them from scenario to scenario. Players will score progress points between scenarios for winning or coming second and, presumably, whoever scores the most progress points by the end of the campaign is the winner. In this video, we're going to take you through the full rules for episode 1 and nothing else. The rest of the rules of the game you will learn for yourselves as you play through. To set up the campaign for the first time, choose your board. It will have one of the four symbols in the corner, and you can write your city's name in this box if you wish. Take the 24 building tiles which show your icon on the back. Each player has an identical set of buildings. Lay these out next to your board before you start the game, and then take a scoring marker and place it on the 10 space. This is your starting score. Shuffle up the deck of building cards and place it in the middle of the table. Each card in this deck depicts one of the buildings common to all players. Finally, open up the envelope corresponding to the episode you're playing, read that episode's story and any of the new rules and scoring that applies to it. This chapter's summary sheet will also summarise the new mode of scoring and what will happen at the end of this episode. In this video, we'll cover episode 1 scoring after the rules of the game. You're now ready to play. My City is played in a series of turns in which all players play at once. To play a turn, flip over the top card of the construction deck, and then all players in the game must construct that corresponding building, placing it somewhere onto their map. The first tile placed in the game must be adjacent to the river. All subsequent tiles played must share at least one face with a tile that has already been built. This must be an orthogonal connection, it cannot be a diagonal connection like this. A tile built over the other side of the river is also valid as long as it has a matching face like so. The only other restrictions are that a tile cannot be placed across the river, it cannot be placed over any of the mountain spaces, and it cannot be placed over any of the forest spaces. Any other placement is valid, including covering trees and rocks. When a card is drawn, a player may be either unwilling or unable to place that specific building into their grids. Here, for example, the player does have a legal placement for this building, but may still not wish to play it. When this happens, the player has two options. The first is to discard that building, putting it out of play, and then immediately lose one point. After doing this, the player may continue playing normally from the next card that was drawn. If your score is already zero, you cannot take this option. The other option is to pass out of the round entirely. When a player does this, the player does not lose any points, but is not allowed to play again in this round of the game. Once all players have passed out of the game in this way, or once the deck is empty, then proceed to final scoring, which for episode 1 is outlined here. 
already you've lost one point for each building you have failed to construct, then at the end of the game you'll gain one point for each visible tree, lose one point for each visible rock, and for each empty light green space. Endgame scores are applied in the order they are listed on the help sheet. So here, the player first gains 8 points for having 8 visible trees, that is, 4 pairs, loses 2 points for having 2 visible rocks, that is, 1 pair, and loses 12 points for having 12 empty light green spaces, to finish with a total of 2 points. Don't worry, scores are low in the first episode, but they will increase as you go along. In later episodes, your score may drop below zero, and there still may be positive points to earn in the end of game assessment. When this happens, keep track of how far negative you've gone. You will have to earn your way back to zero before you can start earning positive points again. Conversely, if when you are adding points you reach the 50 space, then your marker is locked there for the rest of the assessment, regardless of whether you gain or lose more points. Additionally, as a reward for reaching the 50 space, you immediately colour in one progress point, which is the row of campaign points indicated at the top of your player board. Finally, determine your finishing order for the episode. The player with the highest score wins, and in the event of a tie, look at row 1 of your board. Whoever has the fewest empty green spaces on that row breaks the tie. If still tied, look at row 2, then row 3, and so on down the board. Now resolve the campaign effects for this episode. The end of episode effects are shown here on the summary card. At the end of episode 1, whoever finishes first gains 2 progress points, but has to put another rock space down on their map. Whoever finishes second gains 1 progress point, and anyone who was neither first nor second gets to place a single tree down on their map. However, in the two-player game, ignore the second row. The player who wins gets the first row, and the player who came second takes what's shown next to other. Progress points are marked in the circles at the top of the player board, and new trees, rocks, or other features are taken from the sticker sheets that come in this episode's envelope and stuck into a new location onto the player's board, permanently altering the city. Unless otherwise stated, new features must be stuck onto a light green space showing the small light green dot. After completing all of this, you are now ready to move to the next episode of the campaign. Each chapter of the campaign has three episodes, and they tend to be thematically linked within the same chapter. The makers of the game recommend that you play all three episodes within a given chapter in the same session. Beyond that, we'll leave you to find out all of the rules that are introduced to the game through all of the different episodes and chapters in the campaign. The game boards also have the Eternal side, which can be used once you've finished playing the campaign to play the game over and over again. When playing with this side, you're simply playing one-off games, and you will never alter the board. Some of the components and rules that you need to play this side of the board are hidden inside the envelopes, and so we're not going to take you through the rules for this side, but once you've played the campaign, you'll be well and ready to play the Eternal game. And that's how to play My City. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting the like button. Subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so and hit the bell icon so you'll be one of the first to know when we have new and exciting videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. And finally, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please write them in the comments section below. Until next time.